So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you especially to the organizers and the wonderful reviewers that offered a bunch of useful feedback and comments. Um, so as Brian commented, uh, so this is a paper about foster care. Um, so uh, in the US, uh, around 6% of all children go through foster care at some point during their lives. And foster care is temporary care. So on average, children stay for about a year and a half. Uh, hence, this means that almost half a million children are in foster care every day in, in the U.S. So then the question is, why market design in foster care? So the, the, the one problem that I focus in this paper is that many foster children go through several foster homes before they exit foster care. And as you can imagine, this is not desirable. Uh, so there's a lot of evidence, mainly outside of economics, that shows that displacement disruptions are detrimental for children. And social workers know this, and they actually say that, that, that they try to minimize these disruptions. But even though there is um, a broad agreement that disruptions are detrimental for children, they're very prevalent, right? So we can see that a majority of children experience at least one disruption when they are in, in foster care. So this means that they are switched from one foster home to another uh, at least one time. And on average, children are switched uh, over two times, okay? So, uh, in, in the U.S., uh, the system, it's organized at the county level, and today I'm going to show you uh, data from Los Angeles County. That's the county with most foster children uh, in the U.S. So the, the main thing uh, that differentiates Los Angeles from other counties is that it's because it's so, it's so large, uh, the county, it's decentralized into 19 regions, okay? So children enter the system every day. And on average, 40 children are being placed on a foster home um, uh, across all of the 19 regional offices. And here you can see that there are 90 regions color coded. And this is something that is gonna be very important for the analysis. And, and well, and the data comes directly from the confidential records of the Child Protective Services in Los Angeles. Okay, so, so in this paper, um, the to start with, so the main difference from foster care to other um, centralized matching markets is that there is no money in the sense that there are no equilibrium prices. So, so this ties uh, very well to Nicole's earlier talk, but also there is no explicit systematic matching algorithm. So what does this mean? This means that it's a centralized matching market in the sense that social workers are the ones deciding which child is gonna be uh, taken care of by which foster home. But they do this on a daily basis as children are entering the system and they may have discretion, right? So they're looking at case by case basis, they're talking with the children, they're talking with the families and they are deciding which uh, families are taking care for which children. So in a sense, if we wanna study matching, we need to take a step back and take a revealed preference approach. So what I do is I rationalize the choices made by the social workers using a choice model. And what I write the preferences over are what I call placement outcomes. So what I'm gonna assume in the model is that social workers are gonna care about how long children stay in a foster home, so the duration of a placement, and whether children uh, end, uh, need to be switched at the end of a placement to another foster home, or whether placements last until they're supposed to, right? So until children exit the system. So for these, I, um, I, design, a I, I design and I estimate a structural model with data from LA, and then once uh, I've estimated the parameters, I study new policies that are aimed at improving placement outcomes. So basically at minimizing or at reducing the number of disruptions that children um, experience in foster care. And the policies I look at basically um, are aimed to improve placement outcomes by increasing market thickness. And here I increase market thickness along two dimensions. So one dimension is temporal aggregation. So what would happen if instead of matching children as soon as possible, uh, as soon as they enter the system every day, social workers would delay assignments, okay? So how things would look like if they would match children every three days, every five days, every week, et cetera. And the other dimension that I look at is geographical centralization. So what would happen if we would centralize the regional offices in Los Angeles County, create a thicker market, and in principle, this could potentially lead to, to, to better matchings, okay? So just to give you a flavor of the model, so, so there are many parts, but this is the main part of the model. It's how do we model matching in foster care, okay? So what I think of as the unit of observation in the paper is a market. 
So it's a day within a regional office in which there's a set of children, a set of homes, and they're gonna have characteristics, right? And the social workers need to choose a matching. And what the model does is to rationalize the matching that we observe in the data as a maximization problem. So basically what I'm assuming is that the social workers are optimizing a, an objective function that is gonna maximize the aggregate payoff of all of the matchings that are assigned. Where the payoff of a match of a placement is gonna depend on some random shocks, but the, the main uh, term here is gonna be the expected utility of a placement outcome, okay? So outcomes are lotteries. When we assign a child to a foster home, we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know how long the child is gonna stay there. We don't know if the placement is gonna be disrupted or if, the, or if the child is actually gonna exit the system at the end of a placement, okay? So here, the main object of interest in the model is the utility over placement outcome. So this utility function is gonna measure, these parameters are gonna measure the preferences that the social workers have over the distinct termination reasons and how they value the duration of a placement. And something that is key is that they, uh, in the model, I account for the fact that social workers may have different information that we have, right? So they're gonna observe observable characteristics and they're also gonna uh, have access to unobservable heterogeneity, okay? And the last part that I'm not gonna talk about today, it's basically the model of outcomes, right? So once placements are assigned, how does this translate in duration and in disruption? So let me show you the estimates of the utility function, okay? So, so this is the utility function, and these estimates show basically two observations that are uh, the, the main key uh, results of the paper. So one is that the estimates of the model show us that placements that are more likely to be disruptive are less likely to be assigned in the first place. And we can see this by the value of mu, okay? So in the utility function mu, that it's over here, disruption, it's a marginal utility of a disruption is negative and statistically significant difference from zero. So what does this mean? This means that if ex ante a placement is seen as more likely to be disrupted by social workers, then it's gonna have a lower payoff and hence it's gonna be less likely to be assigned. Okay, so this is good news. And the same for permanency. So here permanency means reunification and adoption. So if a placement is seen as more likely to end because the child is reunified with their families of origin or adopted, then it's gonna be more likely to be adopted, okay? And the second positive result is that actually also social workers are minimizing the time that children stay in foster care. And we can see here with a parameter five, okay? So conditional on a child exiting the system at the end of a placement, social workers have a negative marginal utility of duration. So basically, if a child is gonna exit the system, social workers would like for the ch children to exit as soon as possible. So, so these, are, these are positive things, right? Social workers are doing what they say that they're doing. Now let us look at um, the counterfactual. So how the market is uh, uh, administered. And here I'm gonna look at market thickness. So here in this plot, I'm looking at temporal aggregation. So this is the data on D equals one. So this means that uh, children are being matched every day. And this is the average um, probability of exiting the system. And this is the average probability of a disruption. And we see that if placements were assigned say every week or every two weeks, uh, things would certainly improve. The average probability of disruption would go down and, and that of exiting the system right away without disruptions would go up. Um, but definitely you can see that here the lines are flat. So the main message of this plot is that even if we don't take into account the costs of matching children every week or every two weeks of batching assignments, we don't see um, many improvements, okay? So delaying assignments uh, would not be a very good idea. However, spatial aggregation would be a better idea. So we see here that even without delaying assignments, just by centralizing the system at the county level, the average disruption probability would go down in around four percentage points, okay? Um, so to conclude, um, these are the main findings of the paper. So we can see uh, the findings in, in, in two levels. So one is at the level of the social workers, how are they assigning children to foster homes? And the broad answer here is that they're doing, uh, quote unquote, a good job when they assign children to foster homes. And a good job means that they are minimizing disruptions and are also minimizing the time that children stay in foster care. However, at the system level, 
the decentralization, the decentralization in Los Angeles into regional offices uh, seems to be suboptimal. So basically, if, if the system were centralized at the county level, the average probability of disruption would go down. And this would mean clearly that the average number of placements uh, or foster homes children go through would go down. So the moral of the paper, just the thing to remember, is that social workers are actually doing a good job at matching, but exogenous institutions are causing inefficiencies. So the design of the county into regional offices. And in terms of policy, if you want to think of, in terms of policy, the message of the paper is you should improve coordination between the regional offices and not really delay assignments. And thank you. That is all, that's all I've got. And I think we have a few seconds for questions.